Hi there, listeners. Cammy here. Hope you enjoy the show. If you want to find out more or you'd like to get in touch with us at all, then head on over to www.horrormeltdown.podbean.com or track us down on the Podbean app. Podbean app is available on the Apple Store and on the Google Play Store. Thanks for listening. Ahoy there, horror fans, <laughs> and welcome back, potentially back, <laughs> hopefully back, <laughs> hopefully back, to the Captain's Horror Meltdown. I am Cammy. I will be your captain on this journey, and I am joined, as always, by Abel Seaman, John. I was, uh, no, I oh, no, Chief, I, Chief Harpoonist, sorry. I think, I think, to be, keep this interesting, I have to be a different crew member, everyone. Different crew member. Oh, bosun. What's a bosun? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I'll go joined, with it. Joined as ever by the bosun <laughs> on board this merry boat, John. <laughs> um, if you joined us last week and you're here again, then, well, well done. Thank you. You've obviously if you're got new to very, show, a lot of time on your hands, certainly. <laughs> If you're just hearing us for the first time, then I won't go into a preamble. There's a previous episode which you can listen to and get all the info. But John and I are a, a long-time friends and horror fans, and this is a meandering amble through a random path of horror films. Yeah, there's no real, there's no real theme to this. It's just gonna. No. Well, I think you, well, there is kind of a theme, well, which is your yeah. idea, your idea, which which you've stolen from someone else. But you know, go well, for it anyway. yeah, it's stolen from the long running uh, radio show um, on Six Music, which has the chain, um, loosely linked. It can be any links really. But we have uh, our first film last week. It's was... unfortunate the first two episodes aren't really linked. But they will well, be. They, but they are. They, they are kind of, but not in the <laughs> yeah, way you would they're imagine. Not, they're not actually linked. They're only no, linked they're in that you've proposed them as a classic double bill. Yeah. So last week we watched uh, Eden Lake, and John always tops that off with the, ult- the ultimate double bill, Eden Lake followed by Martyrs. Yeah, how cheery! So this week we are <laughs> going to be talking about martyrs. Indeed, and it's unusually for us because we used to do a podcast before this. Um, we are reconvening, not even a week after recording the last yeah. one. Yeah. Now that doesn't no. mean this will be coming out every week. <laughs> it won't be coming. I know. I should stop saying week. Actually, should I? Oh, it'd be absolutely splendid if we could do fifty-two episodes a year. It's mm. never going to happen, though. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what depths of oh, like absolute arse we'll end up watching if we <laughs> did it every week? <laughs> well, that's it. I'm going to have to say after watching this film and then looking at the films we've got coming after, it's like we're going to have to give ourselves a wee... A breather down again. Yeah, like something's not as it's heavy. Like Mary Poppins or... Wizard of Oz or something, both of which are actually quite heavy. Yeah, so maybe, maybe Maniac <laughs> instead, who knows. Um, I always get, I always like to ask if you've done anything since we last convened, but it's been such a short amount of time. Yeah, what have I done since we last convened? Not a lot, it's been still really hot here in Scotland, which yeah. is bizarre. Well, I was filming a wedding through in the West Coast on Saturday. See, my original plan for watching more was to film the wedding and then come back here and then watch it as soon as I got back. The slight spanner in the works there is I didn't get back here until half past midnight. <laughs> oh, no, no chance. Yeah. I was like, no, that's just not really going to work. And that kind of heralded just long-term tiredness, I oh. think. Um, it was a great wedding, but yeah, I paid a hefty price for it. Uh, <laughs> but, and it was kind of topped off today when I, um, I was looking after two boys today. And went to the supermarket to buy something, mainly just to get out of the house, because Cormac now has chicken pox. Amazing. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah, Brown. 
Absolutely, that's, that's, that's a real week killer. Um, happy days. Yeah, absolutely. So that's all my work plan for the week. Up, oh, oh, it's down the share. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> although Rachel gracefully is taking the day off tomorrow, so I can get some stuff done. But anyway, we went to the supermarket to buy some stuff. And I'm at that stage in life where if I don't go to the supermarket without a list, it's oh. a it's a fucking disaster. So oh. I went went to the supermarket, bought not even half a dozen things, and then got back here and realised I didn't even buy the thing that I'd initially gone out to buy from the supermarket. That is, <laughs> that's kind of my level of tiredness right now. And then it was compounded by the fact I got to the bottom of the bag of shopping and there was a tube of tomato puree. Not a weird thing if you've gone shopping, but it is weird if the tomato puree has already half been used. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'd done is like I put my wallet and my door keys in the shopping bag. Put my, put my stuff in the in a bag that I thought I needed to go and come back from the supermarket. And I'd been making spaghetti bolognese and I just put half a tube of used tomato puree in the bag thinking, you never nice. know, never know, might come nice. in handy. Have you been... Uh, now, this, this will give away how infrequently or indeed behind the times we are, but obviously uh, the president of the USA has been... In our country, this, yes. last, this last week. Yeah. I, I don't, you followed I any get of that? To, I, I really wanted to, I was going to take uh, Esme up to one of the protests in Glasgow or Edinburgh, but yep. we just never really got our arses into gear. But uh, yeah, I've been following it with uh, great delight. Absolute, <laughs> absolute nut job. Um, and just really putting his foot in it left, right, and centre. I particularly um, like how he came out with like a massive, like, really harsh statement against. Uh, Theresa May and then when he met her the next day he just said aye it's fake news yeah even though and then said and then said I'll release a tape of it and then the newspaper said he didn't tape it but we did and we are going to release the tape of it <laughs> exactly what he said <laughs> the guy's a fucking absolute nut job it's Legend. amazing absolutely amazing I just I, I, I don't know whether I'm actually coming round to him now he's just so far gone it's absolutely <gasps> so, amazing the orange buffoon as yeah, uh, the doughboys call him it's interesting that you said I like uh, we were talking about your journey to the supermarket because I went to the supermarket today um, and were you drinking milk? Uh, no, I'm drinking a uh, oh, white Russian. One of the oh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, well, this is actually part of the. I went to the supermarket today to buy some sparkling water. Okay, and I walked out of the supermarket with a half bottle of vodka and six cans of Heverly. <laughs> Well, that's kind of what we do, I guess. And, and, no, and no sparkling water. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you superb. what, though. Minimum pricing. A half bottle of vodka was still only £6.32 or something. I've got something to show you. <laughs> right. Now, people... Okay, you, you, if you're not... You probably won't be familiar with our last podcast unless we've coerced you into joining this one. And I met, I took, oh man, I saw this today. I, I went to BM Home Stores and they always have, as a backstory, minimum pricing in Scotland, you've got to pay, is it 50 pence a unit? For 50 the, pence a unit of alcohol. Yeah. And, so, and doesn't, any drink, so, yeah, doesn't matter what it is. That's the minimum price a supermarket or retailer has to charge you. But today, which uh, there was, we have like horrendous white ciders, um, very strong three litre bottles that were going to cost you 12 quid. And I thought, well, they're just going to... You'll never see them again because they used to be £3, now they're 12 quid. It's intended for a person who just wants to get smashed. It's, it's, an alco yeah, it's yeah. for alcoholics, basically. It's for alcoholics. Yeah. It's marketed alcoholics and that's it done. So I'm just going to send you this, which took me by a great deal of surprise. I'll fire it through on the old... Uh, Signal? Chat. Yep. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Holy... Who... <laughs> the fuck would buy that <laughs> I mean really that is for uh, hardcore alcohol fans in the UK a bottle of Frosty Jack retailing for £11.25 <laughs> pence. you can buy a wine. very nice bottle of wine an insanely nice bottle of wine <laughs> absolutely <laughs> wow oh Amazon Prime Day did you get involved in that at all I did okay yeah I the only thing I bought though was or so far I mean I've started drinking now so who knows what will happen <laughs> um, I bought a 15 month PlayStation Plus subscription I'd let mine lapse ages ago 
because mm-hmm. they paid the price up. And I was like, yeah, fuck that. I don't use it. Although as a father now, I get almost no time to play. The play. Actually, I don't know what, I, it's just a waste of money. I don't know why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> You've just made me regret it. <laughs> yes. Did you buy it then? Um, little USB hub. Mm-hmm. I bought an on. Um, I, I I film weddings and various corporate things and things. So I bought an onboard camera light. I bought a 128 gigabyte SD card for one of my cameras. Ooh! Uh, but my most practical purchase was a key finder. Ah! Which is, is it, a. Well, it's it a is it like the old ones you used to whistle at and it made the noise back? Not quite. It's just like Wi-Fi sort, or oh. not Wi-Fi or whatever Bluetooth or Bluetooth it will be. Um, so you get a controller and six fobs. And you can attach yeah. them to your like keys, car key. And they're all color coded. <laughs> your children. So it's like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, I always know where those guys are because of the fucking racket they're making. <laughs> um, so I'm, I, oddly, that's the most I think that's the thing I'm most excited about is being able to find my keys without swearing copiously and blaming it on the children. I didn't buy any films. I didn't even look at the films or anything. Actually. The films the were terrible. It just seems like a bit of a racket. It's just Amazon offloading all the shit, isn't it? Exactly. Really? It's whatever they've got most of that goes in Amazon Prime. Fucking oh, what the bullshit! Oh. <laughs> why did I? Why did I? It's like, you know what? I'm like, oh, why have I just said fuck? You say fuck all the time, John. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, yeah. Apologies, everyone. You came here for the horror. You've got our shopping tales. <laughs> <laughs> but you, um, you have to yeah, endure no. at least ten minutes of bollocks before we get into this. I should imagine. Yeah, totally, totally. It's probably something you have to endure. Although maybe some weeks we will have more interesting tales to tell. Sound likely, um, but you never know. This week we are talking about Martyrs, 2008 <coughs> French horror film by. Now I'm going to murder his name here oh, because oh, trust me, it didn't do French. Pascal, I can get the Pascal bit. Nice. Pascal Logier. That'll do. Um, I've got to be honest; it's going to be way more confusing when we get to the two main actresses. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we will get there. So, That's one yeah. of those things. Like I always, I always revert to the actor's name when I'm talking about films instead of the character's name. That will not be happening in this episode. Uh, no, it's much easier <laughs> to just stick with Anna and Lucy. Yeah, I would much, say, I would say much a lot easier. easier. Much easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what was your... It was you actually you that introduced me to this film as well. Yeah. Um, and again, as we discussed last time, you introduced it to me as something that I should watch in an extreme double bill with Eden Lake. Yep. Um, I don't actually know when Martyrs first came to these shores, actually. I mean, it seems to have uh, sort of hit quite big outside its native, native France uh, initially. Yep. I think it was picked up for distribution externally quite quickly but i don't i don't don't know how quickly it came to the uk um i'm not sure I, one thing i did read i think oof, we, 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 oof, oof, harvey weinstein i think actually oh, took it to the states yeah, and he did in america I think. and yeah apparently famously couldn't watch it till the end <laughs> oh really yeah oh, well actually oh here here's an interesting one uh just looking on imdb just now and it would appear to have screened at Fright Fest again. Yes, that's right. That's right. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so that means it screened the same year as Eden Lake. Oh, at God Fright a, Fest. Wow. Maybe I was there and just tried to block it out. So yeah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, and that would have been actually in uh, August two thousand and eight. It was a uh, first screen in Cannes in the May, and finally came out in the UK in the cinemas. In at the end of March 2009. Again, as I said in the last episode, I just per chance got it in a blockbuster deal um, for yes. rentals, and I hadn't heard of either of them at the time. Um, I think, as you'd mentioned in the last podcast, which means we'll have to keep that bit in the edit to make this continuous, <laughs> is <clears throat> you felt your horror watching had lapsed for it had, a good while. Yeah, I'd say it probably. Had. I, I wouldn't say I was too far. I mean, I still went. You know. I was, as often as I could to the Dead by Dawn horror film festival in Edinburgh but I wasn't a huge I sort of wasn't a huge cinema goer outside of that um, mostly sticking to <clears throat> like rentals and things like that um, and it was that fateful rental block where I got Eden Lake and Martyrs at the same time without knowing what either of them were about I just liked to look I just looked at them and thought oh, that might be alright and uh, <clears throat> what a find! What a stumble upon! I, I know, mean, really, I know. Awesome. And it makes you actually wonder if you're a like <laughs> you know a fairly hardcore 
horror fan, you know, you're a man that's like, you know, dipped his toes into the video nasties back in the day, crazy bootlegs of like the guinea pig films. Yeah. I remember you seeing like Mondo films when you were in the States when we were teenagers and stuff. Yeah. And you stumbled upon Martyrs and got in touch to say, holy shit. <laughs> need to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine what your average punter uh, might have might have said? It's actually interesting. Like in in the uh, we'll, we'll get onto the special features later on, but uh, the uh, director talked about. Uh, I noticed at one point at the start of the feature length uh, behind the scenes documentary, he was sitting with some of the promo photos that had been yep, taken yep. by an art agency. And actually, looking at the sleeve just now, I've got the Blu-ray in front of me. It, it was like shockingly missold, I oh, would say. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I can see people renting it in the cinema, being like, "Oh yeah, oh check it, check out this couple of like sassy young ladies <laughs> with, with, with a shotgun covered in blood." <laughs> oh yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them raising hell. Oh, oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your worst nightmare, people. Absolutely. Before we started recording, this is the first time I've actually watched it without watching Eden Lake first. Fuck. Yeah, that's, that's... And I've got to be honest, it had a whole new impact to me because I think almost watching Eden Lake, which is extremely brutal, kind of, okay, <clears throat> desensitised you to what was about to come. And this is almost the first time I fully, really appreciated how unbelievably extreme this film is <sighs> and how just off the... It's off the chart. This is probably about... Probably about... I don't know. The fifth or sixth time I've seen it. Yeah. And it surprises me every single time. Before we get any further, guys, you know, we're always going to be a spoiler laden show. We're not going to be spoiler free at all. So we're going to talk about plot points. Yeah. What, but what yeah, we will I mean, say, though, is that what we will say, if we will tell you everything that happens in this film, but you still won't believe it when you see it. You, you won't believe it. You will not <laughs> believe it. I guess a sort of a basic summary, and you can, you've got your more like prolific notes than, than I have like uh, the film starts with a young girl escaping from uh, captivity where she's been abused yep um, we then see that she's been put into a, a children's home where her psychological trauma has continued as a result of probably post-traumatic stress or something well that's where she meets uh yeah she meets, she meets anna she meets, uh, uh, she meets anna yeah. transpires that she sees an imaginary creature who harms her a, fr- a lifelong friendship is made with this you know between anna and lucy um with it it cuts to her a completely different scene a complete like a very much different time frame they must I'm be actually the, the very well uh, interestingly like i was trying to like uh, pick pick up the time frame on this because i never really thought about it before it says 1971 at the very start yeah when she escapes and this is supposed to be 16 years later yeah 15 years later so um we're sort of looking at mid 80s she turns up family idyllic family life uh teenagers all sitting around with the mum and dad having breakfast sunday morning and doorbell goes door opens it's uh lucy with shotgun yeah, and just mercilessly guns the father down immediately. Guns the father down immediately. Not even then, a second thought. As soon as the door no, opens, boom. No, then stalks everybody in the house. Uh, you even say stalks, I mean, she just set fight. It's, just it's over a blast them. Yeah, it's in a minute. The whole thing's over yeah. in a minute, and it's brutal. The two kids who have presumably, although it's actually suggested maybe not presumably, don't know anything about it, Yeah, are also mercilessly gunned down. Anna answers that phone call. And so, have you found them? It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, all right, I'm coming down there to make sure it's definitely them. Yeah. It's too late, I dealt with it. The, dealt with it, it was definitely them. Cut to Anna pitches up, and it, we're looking at, like, okay, let's sort of tidy this fucking bloodbath up. <laughs> Which it is. <laughs> While um, Lucy is still plagued by this demon who mm. is um, attacking her. Uh, this is a psychological demon. The first time you see this is just horrific. It's like a... The best way I can describe it is kind of like a 
murderous version of Gollum from the Lord of the Rings it films. Is, it is very much so, yes. Absolutely horrendous. Um, a sort of tortured soul yeah. uh, who's covered in wounds um, and is very bestial. Yeah, but, yeah, when I say Gollum, I mean, imagine a much more horrific version of Gollum. Yes, way more horrific. Yeah. Uh, a very, very screamy. It is, of course... As we all have deduced, a figment of her imagination. She's actually self-harming. She's using this as a uh, as a as a release. And she thought that by killing the family, the beast would go. Yeah. Transpires that the mother is not actually dead, uh, which is the next subplot. <clears throat> Anna tries to help the uh, the mother escape whilst uh, burying the the all the, the dead members of the family. Uh, but unfortunately, Lucy discovers the ruse. Seve- severely se- <laughs> oh God. severely murders the mother is it it's like a what, it's not a hammer it's a it's a it's a it's like a it's like a uh, it's, it? it's like a like a mel like a mini sledgehammer yeah i can't remember what you call it but yeah it's but just repeatedly smashes her in the head with oh. that absolutely fucking horrible total overkill she's tracked in the family that have abused her so with the mother dead the woman uh, the, the, the monster also appears to be giving up the ghost but uh, comes in for a final bit of mutilation which eventually ends up in uh, Lucy killing herself really doesn't it yeah it's very, you know, it's very much a film with three parts um, the sort of middle section is probably a little bit shorter but that first part is it's almost like a film in itself to be honest oh yeah totally and then whack straight into the next section uh, where Anna discovers a secret passage behind a cupboard follows it down comes into like a really modern um, sort of scientific it's kind of yeah it's got like a lab kind of vibe for it science lab vibe pure like uh, really clean subterranean totally complex just like how what how what how big is that? Like way yeah, under the, the ground. Going on here? Way totally. under the ground. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> and she finds at the end of that corridor or that network, she finds a padlocked hatch, climbs down into padlocked hatch. And well, she sees finds... all the images as well first before she oh, goes yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the sort of gruesome sort of uh, people uh at sort of uh, state of near death. Yeah. Um But yeah, then she goes into the room. And oof, just one of those classic things. <laughs> Finds, a, you know, that chain. It moves. Oh, oh, God. At this point, I'd be like, I'm getting out of this house. But no, so no, but no, the mindset of being in a film is like, what's at the end of the chain? <laughs> what is at the end of the chain? Let's go down the chain. Oh, fuck. Well, you've got a, a woman there who's not dissimilar to um, Lucy's apparition, I guess. But with the added bonus of that sort of almost crudely bolted on metal helmets oh and... god <sighs> like stapled like sort of uh, yeah, yeah, staple what... pins hammered through her skull it's just oh, like oh god <laughs> <laughs> she helps her escape oh god it's just so crazy. they're about to leave the house the woman goes fucking tonto <laughs> and the door gets broken in and I saw what you think is the police break in mm. execute the woman who Anna's actually been like helping back, you know, she takes all this apparatus of her head, gives yeah. her a bath, takes her kindly. As well. <laughs> yeah. And uh yeah, and then just like blam, please come in, boom, who the fuck are you? What's going on here? Right, we're gonna chain you up. And then basically Oh, hell breaks loose. Oh, hell breaks loose. She becomes she effectively becomes the woman she's just rescued. She's mm-hmm. chained and then we endure a sort of very slow montage. <laughs> Of like a year, maybe more. It's hard to say. Of... It's hard to say, but it's interesting. You've got the um, oh. wild-looking actress that plays uh, Mademoiselle. Oh yeah, she's she's awesome. And she's also... very cool. I, that's when she comes in, and that you've got um, Anna down at the table, and she sits her down and say, "Okay, this is what it's all about." I'm gonna. It's like a secret society. That secret society. For, I'd say it's like a... a sort of underground secret society. Yeah. It's kind of like uh... they want to see a glimpse into the afterlife. And their way of thinking they can do it is to bring someone through so much torture they basically resign themselves and are not fearful anymore. So at the point of almost death, they're they enter at, a state of ecstasy. Yeah, and they can 
enter while still being alive enter the afterlife and then report back to them essentially and that's that's the, that's the whole crux of the film <laughs> that's a piece of the whole thing yeah so to get Anna to this point <clears throat> it's like daily beatings humiliation <sighs> torture degradation <clears throat> and, it's like, and they think this is fucking horrendous when will this stop I'll tell you when it'll stop when they when tie she... her to some kind of gyroscope thing and then skin her alive without anaesthetic that's oh, when oh <clears throat> god <clears throat> Flayed alive, just unbelievable. And I actually, I'd like, I actually thought, like, I'll tell you, I, I was like, <laughs> I, like, but, but at that stage, you're just, you're completely, you're, you're lost, you're a quivering wreck, basically. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sh- I mean, surely you'd be dead if you were like, yeah, flayed yeah. alive, yeah, yeah. But apparently, historical records have shown people can live for several days after being skinned alive. Oh, that's great news. So it's, borderline, it's a borderline documentary then, yeah, that's what totally. you try to say. Okay, well, I think it wasn't an uncommon punishment in even you know in Europe in the Middle Ages. So after the skinning takes fun. part, the mademoiselle gets a phone call um, yeah. to say she's entered the state. Anna whispers something we don't hear into mademoiselle's, mademoiselle's ears. ears. She gathers the rest of the well, kind of call it society. Yeah. Um, but before she reveals what she has heard she commits suicide end film yeah holy fuck and so it's oh it's quite a bit you don't really know you've got no idea what she said yeah it's, it's, it's either so glorious that she wants to die now or it's so horrendous she just wants to die wants to die yeah <laughs> i love that i love that man it's just like oh that's, awesome. oh, that's, that's the final kicker uh but wow you know, as i said you'd always watch eden lake first and i think it desensitized me to a lot of the violence. Well, very, very, very different films. Oh, hugely different. Well, you can't compare them really at all. <laughs> Which is why I quite like them as a double bill because they're yeah. very extreme. But you couldn't get two more different films in terms of what they're actually about. But yeah, it was interesting to watch this without having the senses numbed by other horror before you'd watched it. And yeah. my God, it was almost like going into it cold. I was actually quite scared. Yeah. Because I wasn't, I wasn't really ready for it. <laughs> I wasn't ready to take it in. And after all these watchings, it still smashes me across oh, the man. face. It's got a lot. Of, it's got a lot of. He knows. He knows exactly what buttons to push, and he knows what he's doing. I mean, it is extremely well made. I going into it completely sober, and with my sort of right. Okay, I've got a. You know, I've seen this film a good few times, but yeah, I'm going to really pay attention. The thing that amazed me is that I think maybe the first time you watch it, the there's a lot of sort of jumpy scares to be had from the yep, yep. the beasts at the start, the beast women. But actually, that was sort of lesser this time because I kind of know it's coming. But mm. the the impact of all the rest of the violence and just the it's just an onslaught. It's just unrelenting, really, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think you're right. Yeah, absolutely. It is relentless. And one of the... Uh, any kind of film in this vein or whatever offers a degree of hope. But when you enter that third act, it's oh, like, you know, well, this, this is just the end. Well, you know... Well, yeah, you know there's going to be no... There's going to be no rescue. There's going to be no rescue. There's going to be, be no there. escape. It's just like, is you it, know, this is what these people do. There's no one coming for her. She's the last... She's the only one that knows what's going on that's still alive. And for me, that's that's one of the most powerful points of it because you watch all these kind of things that happen to her and you know there's no redemption. There's no... You're not getting out of this. No, and you don't know... You and never, she knows it as well. So she just kind of accepts the fate. But like her, you never get to actually know... The people that are doing this to her. I think one of the scariest things, like, you know, once they've said, um, you know, something major's happened, and all the cars drawing up and the people gathering to hear yeah. what's happened, you're like, geez, how long has this been going on for? It's just yeah, like, totally. How many times have these people been called back to this uh, site? Do you know what I mean? How many, how many times have they, like, come down here to find something out? You know, and the guy says that this, I think, you know, the guy that sort of welcomes them all and sort of gives the first speech on the stairs says, you know, we've had 
she's the only the fourth person that's ever got to the last stage and she's the first one that's ever talked to us about this so you're just like how many people have been down this road have been down this path yeah. and, and, and how many different ways have they tried to achieve this same effect because Madame, Madame Moselle says at point, one point as well you know we've we've even done this to children and yeah. you know that the you know that the torture on uh, Lucy started when she was a child but I mean that the, the whole thing that when you eventually get to the end you're like what does, does that mean they flayed a child at some point or like you know what like who's got to that last stage what's the you know because the woman that's got the metal band and what happened to those that didn't get to the last stage you know oh, what I mean no. <laughs> it's just like Christ almighty oh, no. sorry I interrupted you but oof. it's wild <laughs> the no, more no, I think no, about wild. it the worse it gets <laughs> totally totally but it's great that it actually does get you thinking you know it's not just like uh, and I mean I know that it has been likened to Hostel and actually... Uh, very unfairly. The director so. talks... Well, very unfairly. But the director does talk about it in the, <clears throat> his interview, uh, which is one of the extras on the, on the Blu-ray. He, he does say, you know, yeah, maybe the films are connected in some way, but they're opposites. They're, yeah. you know, it, it's all about the torture, whereas mine's all about the pain. And you just... The thing is, you just don't come away from films like Hostel thinking about anything you know no it's presented as entertainment it's there as a sort of endurance test yeah or sort of you know for exploitation fans and yeah this it's, is it's purely there you know, it's purely there it's to test your it. yeah it's purely there to test your resolve those films yeah um yeah. whereas this is it's much different and that's not to not to detract from hostel or anything as well i mean you know I, uh, i've only seen the first one uh, and I recall quite enjoying it as a sort of bit of entertainment. Who knows? Maybe we'll get around to them in our in our ramblings. But um, yeah, be a lot later down the line. I should imagine. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine <laughs> by the time we get to once we get down to the sort of hunting humans stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah which totally. we like, which we really do like to do as a pastime ourselves. But you know, well, yeah, totally. Perversely, it was like a real pleasure watching it last night. I mean, it's it's again, it's a film that you know you and I have watched. Uh, repeatedly obviously we've come back to it it's something you can come back to but it's something that like I don't know it's weird that I I find it weird that I do come back to it and watch it again well that's, that's exactly the same to me like this morning I you know I got up and blah 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 and then <sighs> maybe through the morning it's like why am I doing that to myself <laughs> and don't... and it's like watching that double bill with Eden Lake and Mars there's something <sighs> about me that I'd like being left in pieces you know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <clears throat> I don't know what kind of play. I, I get a pleasure from watching a film and just feeling like there's nothing left. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Listed on Wikipedia, which obviously we don't know is if it's a you know great source for all this information. I'm sure you could probably find out. Actually, French films are usually pretty open about their budgets, but it said about. 2.8 million euros they reckoned mm. and he said that was uh, half the budget of his first film that he made oh, but also way more ambitious so it's interesting watching the um, I mean I didn't watch I, you know, I, I'm just kind of too tired to watch the whole um, making of but it, it's great how open he is and how honest oh. he is it is really refreshing really well, really the refreshing well the same I, I actually the same with the there's a I'd say We'll get to our blue review we'll uh, that, yeah. in a little second, but the there is a feature length, like hour and twenty five minute behind the scenes documentary. There's also a, a twenty minute interview with the director and a fifteen minute interview with the special effects master. But yeah, the the one thing I, I watched both interviews fully. I, to my great shame, I didn't quite get around to watching the whole uh, feature length thing. I watched a bit of the start of it. He was incredibly open in the little interview you did as well absolutely straight up about it and it's straight up about everything about the process of making it and getting it funded and yeah just really really refreshing to see uh and I, I, he's a young guy as well well say a young guy as well he's he's probably about five years older than us or something like that he's sort of yeah mid mid to late 40s probably now it's hard to say because i'm sure he said he made his first film in his 20s or something so yeah. that's something I that's something I want to go back and research because I should have done beforehand. But Christ, I was tired. I think <laughs> so. I don't have I don't have anything to, I don't have it to hand, but I'm pretty sure he was born seventy one or seventy two. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like but I mean, way more open than I've seen any other. I think I I can't ever recall a director 
being more open about the process. Really, no, he's, he's uh, br- brutally, brutally frank about it, which I really like. I really like. Uh, well, like all I'll say is that um, yeah, I, well, I suppose we'll come to it at the end, but I thoroughly recommend it. I mean, it was actually like like we said, it was his second feature, and he's done a couple of features since, which I've not seen either of. Um, one of the things that I did see when I was sort of looking into it was that Clive Barker had mentioned that he was lined up to do a remake of Hellraiser at one point, which okay. is something that I would love to have seen. That does sound interesting. Yep, and when I sort of tried to dig a bit further on that, um, it looked like that all got blown away because he was wanting to do it too seriously and not commercially enough. Yeah, uh, interesting. For American interesting. producers. Uh, sp- uh, speaking of which, obviously, have you seen the remake of Martyrs? I have not. No, and I neither have I. I doubt I ever will. I've not seen it, and I doubt I ever will. Well, but... the thing that the thing that I remember first is I remember reading years ago that it was going. There was someone was looking at making a remake of it. I always think it's. I mean, you're probably going to join me on this. It's especially with genre films. I just don't fucking get it. Mm. Like what is wrong with the American market that they have to remake films? I mean, we, and, and I, I guess why we, remake I guess this film? It's just but, like, what earth? But we're, we, it was the same with Wreck, though. You know, why remake Wreck? You know, yeah. what is, why, like, what is the, is there really, is there really a big stumbling block in the States with subtitles? And will people really not go and see a subtitled film? I mean, I have been notified at the cinema here, which I always think is hilarious when you go to see a film in a sort of multiplex and they say, you do know it's subtitled. It's really, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, it's very rare to actually buy a ticket from a person these days, but, you know, I remember, you know, many times you do realise this film subtitled. Uh, yes, I fucking do realise it's subtitled. <laughs> um, oh, it's okay. I remember a guy saying to me, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm sorry, we've just got to say it because so many people ask for the money back. You're like, really? You're kidding me, Jesus. Really? What? Uh, but yeah, I mean, why you'd want to remake this film? And apparently it's... Com- I, the thing that always interested me was that I read years ago that someone was talking about it and then the next time I read about it, they just said that it's already been made. I mean, yeah. it had been shot so quickly that by the time the news got out, it had been made. And it, it, from the sounds of things, it's very closely follows the start and then just, you know, really waters things down. Well, yeah, apparently, I think, I can't remember exactly the words. I did a quick research now, but um, whoever the guys that made it, and yeah, that's how little research I've done, didn't bother writing that down. Um, they just said, oh, we've made the ending, you know, happier and stuff. Was it? What the fuck? You all—you've well, missed the point of that altogether. Though, oh yeah, no, you? I think she she gets saved at the end. Oh, uh, and, and there's a kid involved. She 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 finds a kid when she goes down, and she finds a child, and the child becomes a sort of like additional hero with her sort of thing. Or, oh, oh god, it sounds like absolute bobbin. It sounds like I, complete I, bullshit. It sounds like a different film altogether. Exactly. I, totally. It's like, I just and you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I will join you in the remake thing, um, but at the same time. I am, against all odds, quite interested in seeing the uh, Suspiria remake. Oh, no, I'm very, very interested in the Suspiria remake. But it looks fucking fascinating. I mean, that's a different story as well. I mean, this is like remaking a film a few years later to try and turn a buck, whereas, like, the Suspiria remake just sounds fascinating. No, the Suspiria thing I kind of get. The thing I don't understand about remaking Mars is, like, it didn't make any money. You know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> totally. It was like, why, why in God's it's never name? never going to be fucking commercial, is it? I, I mean, oh. the box office I saw for the remake of Mars, which, I, again, I'm only going by the IMDb stuff, was $330,000. Fucking hell. <laughs> it's like, why bother? You know what well, I mean? What is the fucking point? What is Absolute, the point? Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if, you know, Suspiria, I can understand because it's, you know, the pinnacle of horror films for a lot of people. I'm sure we'll come back to some of these films again, but this film is inextricably tied up in the term new french extremity mm. long lists of the films that are involved in this but yeah i mean the, the, <clears throat> the biggest one i remember from that is uh switchblade romance and if you'll forget my oh, uh, attention uh, yes uh, the thing is yeah. like rachel doesn't like me saying things with french accents because i <sighs> say them in an italian accent uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> i thought well i say them like i'm in uh, an episode of a lolo <laughs> <laughs> Ot tension. 
<coughs> hot and shy. Oh, I've got Japanese. Um, oh. Sorry. <laughs> New French extremity. Hot tension. Love to hot tension. Hoping that we get to watch that again in this. And I'm sure by will. Alexander. Ah, uh-huh. Aja. Ah, uh-huh. I don't know. Aja. But anyway, who wrote. Who directed Prana 3D? Yes, yeah, that's it. true. That's true. Yeah, Fucking Christ. cracker. And he also wrote Maniac, the remake of Maniac, talking about remakes. Which is beautiful. Which is fucking beautiful and which heavily involved Elijah Wood, who I've got a funny feeling we'll be seeing a fair amount of, maybe not on the screen, but behind the screen uh, in this podcast because he is a big player in the sort of sort of new wave of American underground horror films or yeah. sort of wigged out films. He's a big player in that. So, uh, yeah, definitely hold attention. Other ones that I sort of picked out of the French Extremity thing were Basie Moi, Mm-hmm. Irreversible. Oh yeah. my god. Oh god, Jesus. So, so irreversible <laughs> in the cinema. God. Fucking hell. That's I'll hardcore. never look at a fire extinguisher the same way ever again. <laughs> oh my god. We so there there you go. We've completely spoiled the film. We've as we always do, how, as we always do, we always as will. As we always do, always will. And we have um said how horrible it is and how we are perversely attracted to it and we keep coming back for more. Uh, <laughs> but So onwards and upwards to the Blu-ray review. It's kind of weirdly marketed, I guess. I mean, the sleeve is, yeah, just misrepresentative. Yeah. To you sort of in their sexually de- bloodied up young ladies. <laughs> in their defence, I have no idea what the poster could be to make you think <laughs> what you're getting into. <laughs> That's a that's a that is a very very good point. That's a very good point. In terms of uh, in terms of Blu-ray, um, it looks pretty sparse in terms of special features. But in- initially, it does. Yep. The one feature that isn't on this that I'd be interested in is a commentary. Mm. I don't know how you would deal with a commentary. I've never dealt with a foreign language commentary before. Is it just? Subtitled? Oh, I've not actually. I guess it would be, but yeah, you're right. I've not dealt with that either. To be Do not dealt with that. But, but I, you know, I'm going to be. I'm going to be massively honest. Whilst we do this and like Blu-ray yeah. extras and stuff, and I'll be brief. But is I don't tend to watch very much. Well, I don't either. But I, I think I think that for some people they are important. I, for me, really, it's all about watching the film now. And I don't unless it's a film that I'm really into. Probably struggle to justify the time management required to yeah. go through everything. We've got three extras mm. on the UK disc. We've got a director interview, a special effects interview, and uh, the making of. Mm. Says the making of. It's actually just a, from what I saw. It's a behind the scenes. It's just a guy with a video camera shooting what's going on whilst they're shooting. But um, also actually getting some really interesting... I'm going to be really honest, because I got your kind of thing about actors as well. Like, when they come on, it's like, oh, fuck it, whatever. Um, and sort of skip past it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, everything the director was is quite good, because it does kind of document what he's going through whilst he's making it, like, properly. And he, as we said before, he doesn't pull any punches. No, I mean, well, it's the same in the director's uh, interview. Which is very interestingly shot. There's no one asking the questions. It's just like he is... And he's talking fucking fast. He's yeah. like, it's like he's ranting in a pub. I mean, and it's yeah. standard definition and the sound is like fairly bad. I mean, there's like loud music playing in the background. You're like, yeah. fucking, yeah. he is in a pub. Like, oh yeah. It's like, like a classic like, sort of French street pub. Yeah. Just sort of ranting away at the camera. Yeah. And, but, but it's just so beautifully done talking about the problems he has, he had making it. Um, yeah. talking about the process of it actually even like you know starting to get made Canal Plus getting in touch with his uh, producer and just saying look we're looking for genre films do you think he could write something bang there's money available if you want to write something quickly boom let's try and make a film and the fact that he didn't have any time to think about the process and that if he'd actually had time to think about it he probably wouldn't have made the film he made that he sort of went headlong into it in a way that he wasn't really expecting and that it didn't really work out and that it was uneditable for months and man it's fascinating well wait till we make our short film it's going to be four minutes long a year to edit (laughs) (laughs) if you're interested in the filmmaking process then you will absolutely 
oh, cream yourself over this. Oh, totally. I mean, it's unbelievable access, really. It's fantastic. In terms of the actual film, uh, which is what we are always going to be focusing on when mm-hmm. we do these Blu-ray reviews, we are, I would say that the film, I can't imagine it looking any better than this. The film was shot in 16 mil. Mm-hmm. I think it was beautifully represented um there's a lot of you know some of it's quite soft but again it's just how the way it was filmed yeah i mean it's like shot very naturally very yeah. sort of realistically it's it feels like a well i'm sorry to say it, it feels like a sort of french art house film yeah for a lot of the time all the stuff that's shot in that house at the start you know it's not not really like with that whole shotgun sequence in the house that is you know near the start it's just shot like a art house drama. Do you yeah, know what I mean? There's absolutely. no, there's, and, and it was interesting in one of his documentaries. He he said about cutting away loads of the music, cutting away the music, cutting away the music because it made it too much of a horror film. You know, it just sort of added too much additional drama. He wanted everything to be really, really punchy. You know, when people are getting shot, they're like, it's like bang, you're dead, bang, you're dead. You know, there's no. He didn't want any slow mo. He didn't want any anything that took you out of the moment he wanted you to be totally involved in it and uh, the whole film's been shot like that like it's been very brightly lit for a lot of it uh, a lot of that stuff and it's it, I think the film for I don't know what the actual process is then for I, I'd be interested to have seen what it looked like in the cinema because obviously the initial stuff was all shot in Super 8 mm-hmm. um, which is as good as the footage is ever going to be, it's going to be like uh, uh, grainy inter- as all fuck. And yeah, it was old, interesting old that stuff that being a super. I just thought it was like because um, now you me- just shoot it on digital and process it and to degrade look like it. That. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest, I was struggling around. I couldn't really figure out whether they'd done that or not. So I'm not sure that effort was worthwhile. But you know, it worked. It worked. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you had access to Super Eight film, and I don't think you can get Super Eight processed anymore. Mm. on blu-ray it looks as good as it's ever going to look it's grainy where it's grainy because it's been shot in 16 mil film yeah um and i think it's really cool that it was <laughs> do you know we were talking in the last episode about the fact that the film was shot on 35 mil and not a lot of stuff shot on 35 mil anymore but yeah how much stuff shot in 16 mil i mean the, you know they're not ma- they don't they don't make film stock anymore so there's going to be mm. a sort of finite amount of film stock left uh, to shoot these things so it's something that's just going to disappear now you know that that look I is agree. going to disappear yeah, yeah. It's, and, it, and it does look great in that way it's like um yes there is plenty of green to to cast your eye upon but it, you know really it does add to the film i think in a little it does bit. it does. Uh, it totally it's got, does it's got a really nice quality to it it's got a dts hd which is it's sparsely used but sparsely it, used but when it does you're but like God, oh it, fuck. yeah and I think <laughs> that's a, the beauty of it you know I, I quite like that when a sound system's really sparse you know you'll you'll find lots of action films where there's like let's just you get the old, put, like, let's put effects everywhere bah, yeah, bah, 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 bah. but, it's, but know, these I, guys these guys wait until your weakest moment oh, <laughs> <laughs> so fucking shitting it I'd say another thing is that I was watching this last night so uh, my wife Marianne's away uh, with work at the minute and I was home alone my daughter was asleep upstairs five years old she isn't, she's not done it for a long time but she would occasionally like wake up and come down and you just have oh god you just have a small child in the corner of the room while you're watching the <laughs> film and you'd look around and be like like a, the thought of turning around and seeing a child in the corner of the room and be like, ah! but also be the thought of her coming down the stairs and seeing what was on the screen. I, w- I would, I've been I would traumatized add, for life. To be honest, oh I would, God. I would reverse A and B there. To be honest, yeah. Kemi. Yeah, God. <laughs> Tonight, I went up the stairs and said to her, oh, "Like go, like like go get dressed for bed, and I'll be upstairs in a minute." And I came upstairs, and she was standing in the <laughs> in the corridor upstairs with her face against the wall, like looking, like standing right against the wall, like like the end of um, <laughs> the Blair, Blair Witch, Project, Witch Project, just <laughs> standing in the corner, just looking down at the ground, and oh I was like, oh, well, <laughs> Esme, "What are you doing?" And she was like, "Dad, look at this. Look, if you look down the corner of the wall." 
like your feet it looks really weird i was like oh my god she's just like <laughs> like it was just like you know she just noticed she'd like bumped into the wall or something and looked down and noticed something i was like oh my god why are you standing there in the corner of the room? like absolutely <laughs> fucking terrified me just totally freaked me out oh last night as well <laughs> after watching martyrs i went up to bed and i was like sitting i was just like uh checking my email or something before i went to bed and uh completely pitch black we've got a fan on just now because it's so hot so there's a lot of noise she came into the room and touched my hand Ooh. in complete darkness and I couldn't see her because I had the light from the phone <laughs> shining on my face so she could see me and she just came over and touched my hand and I nearly fucking shattered <laughs> now I watched Martyrs was it last no was it, yeah it was last night and then came straight upstairs Alexander had already gone into our bed so when he goes into our bed like I'm just going to sleep in his bed because I just can't be bothered with the size ratio oh yeah so anyway it got to like half four in the morning and I was having a fucking horrendous dream absolutely <laughs> horrendous that I can't you know those horrendous dreams you can't remember but it just horrendous oh. and then I woke up with this abrasive feel on my hand <laughs> And the fucking cat was licking my hand. Oh, <laughs> this little sandpaper tongue. Hey, Daddy, what time is it? It's, fa- it's fucking four in the morning. <laughs> Fuck off. You will get no food at this time of day, cat. No time. So, yeah, I just I understand that pain. Because it's, especially when you're in sleep and dreaming something horrendous. And oh. this rough sand, they've got a hellish rough. I mean, oh. I don't want to go too far with the rough sandpaper tongue thing. It's better, your old, uh, better than your old cat. Who was called Lucy? Oh, that bit my toe. Yeah, well, fish has bit my toe a few times as well. Yeah, God, they're um, such they're such dicks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, so does that bring us to the end of the yeah. review? If I'm going to give it a five star rating, I'm going to have to give it a five. It's you know, it's what yeah. it is. Yeah, um, I'm sure if they had the budget, they would have shot those extras on HD. But who gives a fuck? Um, the information's there. So, oh man, it's a wealth of information. I yeah. highly recommend it. Get it watched. We have one final segment. We do. That we like to call, what would James Furman do? This could be short as well. (laughs) This would be fucking short. Um, (laughs) James Furman, if you don't know, was the uh, head of the BBFC through our formative years. Uh, He was head of the BBFC from 75, I think. He was there for a long time. 75 till 95, was it? Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Fucking wild. He was a, he had a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a censorious bastard. But also, at the same time, a libertarian. But so a libertarian, it was very strange. Very, very strange. strange. Very strange. Very into his art house films and very into, yes, the, 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 the intelligentsia can take their... Depravity, yeah. but the working yeah. class should Can, not be exposed. Yes. That was that was his beef. It's just like you know, it's well, man. Imagine trying to get away with that now. It's like, oh. well, I, I'm educated. I can watch this and get away with it. You, sir, or not, you must not watch it. Uh, interestingly, this film in France um, got a NC17 mm. rating, yep. um, which the director was fucking outraged with and the distributors were as well uh, saying that no other horror film had ever been given that rating and that it should be rated 16 which is generally the upper limit for non-pornographic films in France and they managed to get it eventually released at 16 um, in France after much appealing yeah. Um I would say that over here this under James Furman this film would not have stood a fucking chance. No. This is be... in the in the Germ- in, in the Furman scale of what <laughs> no, <laughs> of, we'll have to go from, through the Furman scale again. Well <laughs> we start with a raised eyebrow. Reading up on the bit of the Furman era today, there was a like a strong because there was a concerted effort by the right wing press to try and badger the BBFC for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, like, Crash and Child's Play 3 and stuff. And the Tories were trying to table an amendment to the Video Recordings Act to have no film over PG. So if anything was over a PG, it shouldn't be allowed to be released on video. Mm, I, I think you mentioned that in the last I one. I think you mentioned yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I, I confirmed that again. No film above the age of PG. Only children's films available in the house. 
yeah. in case children watched the film that wasn't suitable for them. I think that this film would definitely have him spinning in his grave. There's, If it came down to individual cuts, it would be cut so heavily. Yeah. It would, render, it would render it ridiculous. I it think. would be utterly ridiculous. The simplest cut that you could illustrate this with to our listeners would be the bit when the woman's getting bludgeoned in the head with a hammer. Yeah. He had a sort of rule about like repeat blows. I think it was like more than two repeat blows or something you weren't allowed to show. So basically that scene would be reduced to, effectively he'd probably just reduce it to her getting hit in the head once. We don't get that whole traumatic extended like, you know, you know, none of that. All the self-harm would be gone. So that would cut all that stuff out. That would be rendered totally ridiculous. Uh, The gunshot stuff's totally brief and you know, so that would probably survive, but holy shit, I mean, there's no way, I mean, it would just be, it would be a straight up, he would just say, there's no way to cut this. It's not, you know, unless he had some bright idea about it. Another film that we all probably almost definitely come to Henry famously was recut by him and he thought that he'd made it better by recutting it Mm, uh, which mm. just goes to show what his banner was but this is a film that I think that definite Furman spinning his grave no way to recut it yeah any of our UK listeners if you're proper horror fans I'm not if you're proper horror fans but if you're horror fans of a certain age I I dare say that you uh, dipped your toes into the uh, the world of the, the bootleg video seller um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the old, uh, the old classified ads at the back of Darkside magazine. <laughs> um, Absolutely, man. No, this wouldn't this wouldn't get anywhere near a release. I don't nah. think. Not nah. back in the day. Um, no. Nope. Thankfully, we have more reasonable censors these days. I think. Um, but there are still censors. Let's be honest. There are still yeah. censors. Although we obviously they call themselves classifiers. But uh, interestingly, the next film we're moving on to was around in yes, the. Um, was around in the BB in the James Furman era, and it was very controversial in the BBS in the Furman era, but escaped completely unscathed. Yes, because it's a foreign language film. Yes, because it's very arty housey. It is very arty housey, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but that's not to say it's not controversial. Uh, so our tenuous thread is that I saw this included on a list of new French extremity films and next week we will be, or, ne- or, or whoever the fuck knows when, as I will say again. Let's do the next week, next episode. Next episode, there we, we go. will be uh, discussing 1992's Man Bites Dog. Mm. Uh, Interesting from Belgium. Choice. Interesting from Belgium, choice. not France. Well, they're very close and they speak the same language. Half of them do anyway. Half of them do. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's a film that I have very, <laughs> me- I would say fond memories of, but I don't know if I actually do have very fond memories of it. I'm going to tell you, Rabin, I'm not looking forward to it. No. no. Uh, when was the last time you saw it? The first time I saw it. A long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> uh, last time I saw it was definitely on VHS. Uh, so, yeah, a long time ago. Hope you've enjoyed this rambling episode. Uh, the next episode <laughs> will be equally rambling, no doubt. And uh, oh, yeah, I have just realised I'm drinking Belgian beer. Oh, well, God, you're you're fully linked up. And Belgium just came third in the World Cup. <laughs> Again, <laughs> highlighting how badly Far these will be released. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. All right, well, thanks for listening and uh, please do get yourself involved in watching Martyrs and if you're listening along with us, then get yourself watching Man Bites Dog too. And we will see you next time. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. Bye for now. Cheers, folks.